In this video we're going to cover the decision trees, or the modern name of that which is called CART, that stands for Classification and Regression Trees. And I love this method for a couple of reasons. The first one is because we can have straightforward interpretations of the fitting model. And the second is because decision trees are the basis of more sophisticated methods like random forests or ggboost that are probably the most trendy methods out, out there. So let's summarize so far what we have learned. So we've seen a couple of methods, k and n, and remember k and n is a non-parametric method, meaning that we have this hyperparameter k, and depending on the value of k, we can have this curvy boundary between class 1 and class 0. And the, the bad thing with k and n is that it has low interpretability, so the shape of this boundary is not very straightforward. It's very good actually in terms of accuracy and is low bias in the sense that we are not imposing the shape of the boundary, so this is learned from the data. And the problem in the middle is that we have medium to high variance. So if we change uh, the training data set, basically we have a different boundary. On the other hand, we've seen logistic regression. And logistic regression is really strong in terms of interpretability. Remember that it takes a little bit to understand this exponential of the coefficients, but in the end it's really, it's really straightforward to understand that in terms of probabilities of odds or odds ratios. But the problem is that it's highly biased in the sense that we are trying to impose a straight line to reality. And again, it's kind of medium to low accurate in, in terms of uh, the effect of training data in the result. So today we're going to cover the decision trees that try to balance these two approaches. So let me show you the main idea with this data set. So imagine that you have this data set and we want to classify the blacks and the reds. And we only can play with horizontal and vertical lines. So let's uh, start with horizontal lines. Imagine that you want to be the, the most accurate possible. So you want to reduce false negatives and false positives. So you could draw, for instance, this line or this or this one. So which one is going to reduce the number of false negatives? Mm, it's going to be this one. Why? Because it's really, it's really difficult to see black dots below this line. But on the other hand, if you take this one, you're, you're going to be very good with, positive, with true positives, but you're going to miss a lot of data here. Okay? So let's take this one. Now let's try to draw a new horizontal or vertical line. Let's play with a vertical line. And again, we want to maximize the, the rate of success, the accuracy. So we can draw this line or we can draw this other line. So the first one is better because, as you can see here, the number of reds outside is, is going to be really low. And actually, we have done this pre-classification before, so we only have to consider this plane here. So I'm going to take this one. And again, we could draw this one, so now we can basically say that all the blacks are inside these three lines, and we're leaving these points here. We could do better if we draw a new line here, a new classification, and now we can say safely that almost all the blacks are in this region, and almost all the, the reds are in this region. So what's the difference between this and K and N? The difference here is that we are playing just with the straight lines, and this is what makes interpretability so high. Because basically, uh, uh, trying to make an interpretation of this straight line is very simple. You, could, you just have to say, I'm above this point or I'm below this point. And the, other, and, the, and the same thing with the other parameters. So this is the idea of decision trees. So here you have a real decision tree, and we're going to define later a parameter, which is called the complexity parameter. And if this is zero, basically you're making the most exhaustive classification that you can do. And if CP is too large, basically you're saying that, for instance, everything above a line is black and below is red. So you want to be somewhere in the middle. So you don't want to be very precise because you want to maintain interpretability high. So in, in this case, you can see that the first line is going to be it's going to split the world in everything above minus 4.3, which would be something around there, and below 4.3. Okay, so as you can see here, yes means that you're above this point, and no means that you're in this part. Okay, so as you can see here, if you're not below, then you have to make more classifications here. And again, this is our new line. So if this is below 3.8, we're going to be in this part. And again, the next line, if we are above condition to all these decisions that we have made before, then we are taking just this part. So we are above this line, on the left of this uh, vertical line, and on the right of this vertical line. And this is how we are classifying, okay? So basically we're saying we are yeah, red in these situations and we are black in the other situation, okay? We can improve a little bit this classification if we reduce the complexity parameter and we allow for different vertical lines. So in this case, if we reduce the parameter a little bit, then we add a new class 
which is being on the right of 4.6 sorry uh, above 4.6 so here now we got we end up with the same classification that we we did by eye inspection at the beginning of the video so did you get the idea okay of course we can do this as complex as we want so if the complexity parameter is zero basically we are using all the information available in the tree but then the classification is going to be messy so this looks more or less like k and n the problem is that as we are splitting our data set in vertical and horizontal lines we end up with these rectangles that are not very meaningful here so basically we have to play a little bit with this parameter and again we've covered in another video cross validation so basically we are going to use a cross validation to decide which is the optimal value of cp so here you have another example this is the titanic example so basically we are trying to classify survivors and people who died based on sex for instance and the number of siblings or the age being above or below different kind okay so this is a very complex tree and increasing complexity parameter we can reduce the size of the tree okay some notation here so this is basically this is the root node and basically tell us that 38 percent goes into the one category one category is survive so basically only 38 percent of, of the people in the data set survive and now every time we answer a question yes is going to be to the left and no is going to be to the right so next definition any any of these nodes that are not at the end or at the beginning are called decision nodes here is what the interesting part begins because basically his here is the interpretability part so basically here we're saying that we can split people between sex post uh, sex male and age above 9.5 and in the end we have leaf nodes or end nodes that are basically the last classification so finally here we have survive or died and we have the percentages of crossing any of these decision parts as you can see also here we can mix categorical variables and numerical variables and the good thing with decision trees is that as we are splitting in vertical and horizontal lines we don't need to normalize the data and actually this improves interpretability so basically here age is measured in years so we don't need to say that we are going to play with age minus the mean value divided by the standard deviation so no need to standardize no need to scale the factors basically the good idea is that we can play with the numerical values by itself more interesting things about um, decision trees is that we can play with the depth actually this complexity parameter that I mentioned above basically plays with the depth if complexity parameter is zero basically you end up with all the tree if complexity parameter is large enough basically you have just one node okay another interesting thing is that the tree doesn't need to be symmetric so basically as you can see here if you go to this branch then you end up with a leaf node in, in, in only with this criterion and here you have a lot of decisions to make so you don't need to be you don't need to have a binary tree you can have something more complex the other thing that is interesting is that in any branch of the decision tree you can play with the ranges so basically when you are at this point that you want to discriminate better between those with age above and below 28 then the next criterion is going to be age again but now you basically you're just saying that you have a small slice of years between 28 and 31 but if you go in this side of the tree basically the range is different so this 31 is independent of this 7 and this is what gives flexibility to decision trees so again cross validation is going to allow us to to prune to to cut this tree in a very simple one so this is the whole tree for instance for the data set on on heart disease risk and again using cross validation you can see that you don't need to use the whole size of the tree so basically the error is low enough if you are at this point or maybe this point so basically you can cut the tree at a very uh, small depth so the interpretability is high so as you can see here if you want to classify risk you have just to, to compare a couple of things that has to be with a cardiovascular disease risk and whatever okay but compare this tree with this other one so this is almost useless and this is very informative for a, for a medical doctor. This is really easy to do in caret and I'm going to devote another video for this. But basically the syntax is very simple. You have to train and the method is going to be R part, which is a partition, a partition tree in R. Basically this is the syntax. You can uh, specify the complexity parameter and the complexity parameter basically say what it's saying is that this is the whole tree and I'm going to cut from this asterisk and below so basically here I'm only showing these three decisions so the first one the second and the third one okay 
Another interesting thing with decision trees is what is called feature selection or variable importance. So one thing that comes out of the hand with decision trees is that you can compare the importance of different variables. And this has to do with how many, what's the level of discrimination of using this variable. And as you can see here, the closest to the root node you are, the more important is the variable. So here, as you can see, x2 is more important than x1 because the first decision is based on x2. So now the best part of decision trees, I'm going to leave the worst news to another video on random forest. But the best part is that it's so easy to understand. It's, it's really fast to implement. So basically the, the creating these trees is really fast and you're going to see that when you play in R. And you have feature selection included in the interpretability part of the problem. So for instance, in this case, that this is uh, a very simple analysis of the Titanic data set. You can see that the most important variable here is sex. If you are a male, then probability of surviving is 21%. And if you are female, then the next criterion that you want to take is class. If you're in third class, basically the probability of survival is 45%. But if you are female and you are in second and first class, the probability of survival is 93%. So this is really fast to understand. You see what are the most important features and you can explain this even to your grandma.